Are you a new PhD student that's just starting out with the experimental work or are you a postdoc starting to work on a new topic or generally somebody starting something in a particular field? Then I think this is good advice for you. Make your first experiment on this topic or during your PhD a simple one. Start simple and do not set up a massive, very, very complex experiment as your first experiment on this particular topic or during your PhD. And why is that? Well, if you do something for the first time, as you might do during your PhD or if you're starting a new topic during your postdoc, you are much more likely to make mistakes because you're simply not as familiar with how things work. Or something occurred that you simply didn't think about because of lack of experience. And of course, sometimes these things are unavoidable, right? Because you're trying to do new things. So then the best way to deal with this is to get these mistakes and the things that you hadn't thought about before, because you simply can't think about everything, get these out of the way by setting up a simple experiment first where you will encounter all these potential problems. And this means setting up a simple exploratory study first, where you get familiar with this theme, with <laughs> the pitfalls, with the risks, and with the things that you hadn't thought about when you do something for the first time. Now, I am also subject to the temptation as somebody who advises people or something, somebody who would set up a study themselves, is there is always this temptation to add another layer, add another factor, or add another setting basically to your experiment. So your experiment that starts maybe as a simple one, it has the tendency, the longer you think about it, to become more complex. And so it's always this temptation to cover more ground in your experiment. And my advice is resist that temptation. For your first experiment. Resist the temptation, set up a simple experiment and remember that even a simple experiment on a novel topic or a new topic to you can still yield a lot of interesting insights. Especially if you can get into more detail also in the response variable side of things. You don't need to always make things more complicated on the treatment structure side of things. You can also make a more complete study happen by measuring more things afterwards. Now, another important reason is that a massive experiment can be overwhelming and I've seen this time and time again. So I think it is very good to not have your first experiment be this potentially overwhelming experience that may set you on a negative trajectory. And this is especially true when you're starting a PhD because this has the potential to be an overwhelming experience anyway because you have to deal with a new setting, a new experience, you have to review the literature, you have to master coursework or whatever. So this is has all the ingredients of having the tendency to be overwhelming anyway, so don't add a massive overwhelming experiment to that mix. A further reason is if this really fails and experiments do fail, and if you haven't encountered that, I'm sure you will at some point, experiments do go wrong for a variety of reasons. And if this was a first exploratory simple experiment with a limited investment, then your loss is not as severe as if you had set up this massive experiment that took so much of your time and energy. Because if a huge experiment goes wrong, then you may suffer quite a dip of motivation. I know that from experience. So I think it's very good to minimize that risk when you're doing something for the first time. Now, make sure this experiment is simple, but not sloppy. It should still be well planned, right? A simple experiment doesn't mean you're just throwing something together quickly without thinking about it too much. This is not what I mean. I mean set up a very well thought out, carefully designed study where you cover all your bases in terms of experimental design, but make it not as complicated. Simple means simple with respect to the treatment structure, the number of replicates and the level of difficulty also with analyzing things afterwards. Now, sometimes it may be that your project is inherently complex because it asks questions about complex interactions among factors, for example, then basically it seems like you have no choice, but you still can set up a simpler version of that complex experiment that really your question demands, for example, by looking at factors in isolation and trying how they work out first. There is always a way to break something down into a simpler way or into a subset of the question so you can try these things out first. 
Yeah, I think this is super important advice. I'm trying to give this every new PhD student that's incoming into the lab and I hope it will also be useful for you. With that, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.